The art of cycling. Cycling is probably one of the easiest ways to sustain offensive zone pressure. It's not like you need a, you know, a lot of skill. So skill work, but it's mainly a, I guess a, just knowing where to be, positional uh, exercise. Anyway, I'll just go and play all of them. These are, this should go through pretty quickly. First one. Alright, so the first period was hard to tell what the hell is going on. Okay. Alright. So start over. So as usual, I'm going to show it once and then uh, kind of talk about it. Alright. Anytime the puck goes behind the net, like right there, that's a chance to cycle. Okay, ideally, I'm get my marker. Ideally, as he's coming around the board like this, he should be able to just drop the puck back, uh, you know, back into his own. Uh, I'm going to talk more about this in the passing section, too. But the corner has the puck should have a pass to his forehand and a pass to somebody else on his backhand. Get rid of that. Yes, yeah, so I'll talk more about that. Okay, so it's right here. Um, that's okay. Pass to the player, shoots. It's chasing down there, right? Yeah. Okay, so right here is where it kind of starts. Um, Paul, I know, I think it's far. Uh, I think you just went and shot it. Now, I don't know if that's... Maybe I shot it, maybe someone's in the middle. It's hard to tell in this crappy angle. Um, I'll show you Okay. But uh, if you don't have a shot, like if... I can't tell if player has like a tip chance, but if he does not, and you might get blocked, the easiest way is to pass it down here. It's adjacent. And right when you pass it to him, you should just cut right in. So that's where the cycle is going to start. Uh, so you, you cut in, and uh, if he doesn't pass to you, like if this guy stays with you, then you're going to go behind the net, so that way Jason can drop it off back to you, and Jason's going to circle this back this way too. As you get the puck, you're going to try to hit him if it's not open, if it's covered, and the defense is playing well, and you're just going to keep on. You're going to make sure you're skating up the board. Okay. Don't stand still. I think one of our mistakes is we're, uh, we keep standing still on the, uh, the cycle work. Uh, so, I guess, hold on. I'm just keep running it. It's the same deal here. I think Scott gets it. Alright, so, uh, but if you can tell Scott's gonna get that puck, then you gotta go down here for the support on the board. And then you can do the cycle again. Okay, that's the first one. Well, I should remind you guys, yeah, I'm just gonna need these abrupt changes. My Camtasia, which is what I'm using to edit all this, is, uh, it's not rendering properly when I put in the, you know, little 1, 2, 3, 4, um, title clips or whatever it's called. Alright, good pass there. Pass with the J. And we're off. Okay. Not a big deal. Just like the other ones. A lot of these little minor things we can kind of pick up. Maybe pass across. Okay, so uh, I think it's Tony. Um, Alright, so a couple thoughts coming on my mind. Uh, as soon as Sue passes a crossball, this one's a little bit tougher now that I think about it, because uh, the passes of Sue, um, I can see why you're going towards the net. Uh, but as soon as he passes to Jay, you want to move, well Jay, you can walk in, you can actually walk right in the shoe. Uh, in this case, I would not cycle, but you can. Um, like if this guy was actually right in Jay's face, I would actually go back here. So if I were Tony, I'd go right here, so Jay would have a pass, and again, Jay, you would just cut in. So, Jay, if you were pass along the board, you would just cut right in towards the net. And Tony would, I think it's Tony, would you pick it up and do the same to you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, not, you guys probably seen all this. I'm just going to just pause it right now. Okay, so right here. Right when we get to, at any time you shoot it and the puck goes around the boards, uh, that's a chance to cycle, okay? 
Um, yeah, like I said, I'm not going to keep playing these here, actually. I don't think we need to do that. Uh, as soon as he gets it, so he's in position to get it. I think a bit, I'm pretty sure it's John. So that's a good position. Um, shooting's okay if you can get it through into somebody who's in front of the goalie. If not, I would just put it uh, down there. Okay, yeah, I think it's John. Okay, so the puck goes on the other side. So same thing. Instead of standing right in front of the net, because it's going to be harder to get the shot through, go to the side. Go behind the boards. Behind the boards. Did you even get that? No, he didn't. Okay, never mind. Sorry. Yeah, this next one is very basic. John skating. You shoot. It rims around and goes wide. Hit some pucks from all around the board. I think that might be Paul. I don't know. Um, so you're turning the wrong way. Let me show that again. So, yeah. Which way are you turning? You should be turning the other way. He's got... When it runs around the boards and someone gets it on the board, the initial instinct should be to just throw it right back down there. So, uh... Whoever shoots... Whoever shoots and the puck goes around the boards, whoever shot it can just go behind the boards back here. And the pass will go right back and then we can start that cycle. Okay? Then we turn the wrong way. Do that one more time. You shoot it, turn the wrong way. Yep, so he needs to be able to throw it right back down there. And he did. And unfortunately, nobody was there. Yep. Do the next one. Uh, okay, good. So it looks like we're on offense. So he throws it in. I think it's Tony, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Okay. Good. So with the rims are out, it's the same deal. Whoever is back there, just keep following. Keep following the play. So Tony should be able to throw up back. Um, so usually, you have two passes. One should be to the point man. So, um, you know, someone on your forehand and someone on on the back side. So front side, back side support is what I call it. So, so he should always have two passes, one in the front, one in the back. Uh, I think the first option should always be to cycle. The reason why I like cycling better is because if you throw it to a point and he uh, coughs it up, uh, it could be trouble versus the other way. If you throw it back down and cough it up, it's not really dangerous. So uh, my first option would be back and the second option would be to the point man. Okay. Just my opinion. So we had someone kind of going there. It looks like I probably should have been falling behind the net, but that's all right. And don't know if that was a shot or a pass. And a nice cough up too. All right, good recovery. Okay, this one's pretty minor. Um, so right here. So as soon as Jason gets it. Uh, so he's not in a position where he can shoot. Maybe he can turn around and shoot really fast. Uh, that's okay. Um, as you're the forward, so you're probably around here somewhere. Yeah, off the screen, actually. But what you want to do is uh, try to get a rebound. So you're going to cut this way. But one thing, uh, especially in rep league, that I see is a lot of people just park their ass in, in here. Don't, don't do that. Just keep moving. Yeah. It's going to be hard for him to get a shot off. So as soon as you see he can't get a shot off, then you're going to keep going behind the boards so he has a pass. Yeah. Um, so I think, if I remember, Jason did throw it around. And you have to go kind of hard nobody's there. But it's all about, you don't even have to be there. You have to just anticipate being there. So uh, once again, he, even though it wasn't a shot, Jason passed it around and rimmed it around. So Scott should be able to just throw it right back down here, and somebody should be right here. And actually, that's where we can have a third man cut in instead of Scott. All right, so hopefully that may be sound of confusing, so I'll repeat it. Scott, once he gets it, right, as soon as Jason, you threw it, you rimmed it around, you should follow that pass and go back here somewhere. That way Scott can just throw it right back down. And because Blair is in a kind of a spot right here, he can just cut in. Versus the usual case where the two man cycle with Scott would cut in. He would not have to in this case. Okay. This one. Yeah. Sorry. Running through. Okay. Yeah, let's see this one. And that blur. Okay. And so right here. 
Scott is waiting for a pass, so uh, now that this guy's running his face, you might want to back up the pack just to test Scott. Um, as soon as you see that he can't really pass it or shoot, that's when you should just go down low. So right here. So you're, you're kind of in a tough position. I would just move. I would just move back there right away. Just go for that cycle. So right when Blair passes back again, Blair, then you can cut it towards the goalie. And Scott, right when you see it, you can move up the board. Okay. Um, uh, one thing our forwards should not have to do is twist back and forth. Okay, I it takes up energy doing that. Uh, I can do it, but I don't like doing it. I'd rather just cycle back. It's easier. Okay. Uh, another thing too. Once you guys see this tie up, this 50-50 tie, -up, I probably mentioned in my other videos. I'm doing a lot of these out of order, but uh. It's worth repeating. If there's a tie up, the second guy has to just go right in. Don't wait for them to get to get out. One of my pet peeves is just sitting there after and just watching them try to battle it out. No, just use the numbers. Just go on a two on one. Now only do that on offense though. Okay, don't help on defense because if you help on defense, uh, what happens is if the guy happens to dig it out while you're going to him, there's going to be an open man. But on offense or in the neutral zone, second man just walk right in when there's a tie up. And they almost got it with the second man, even though they're on defense. Good pressure there. Okay. Not shoot. This is very minor. Not a big deal here, but. Uh, so again, Tony, uh, same deal. You know, you just passed up Paul. So you know he's right behind you, okay? So use that to your advantage. Um, I think you you can pass it across, but uh, it's got to go to someone. And yeah, that one's kind of nobody's really open. Uh, that one's easier to pull. You just tap it back and, and have the presence of mind that you just passed them. So you know there's only like two feet behind you. So you're just going to do a very light tap, okay? Uh, Paul, uh, you might want to back up a tad and expect that pass. Um, I'm pretty sure you're ready for it, but... I'll just be ready that Tony might give you a really hard one. Okay, this next one, another real minor thing. Skating in, skating in, and it stops up. Um, so you gotta stop up sometimes, especially when you're getting double team like that. Uh, oh, you gotta, you gotta get in there. Um, but as soon as they stop up and you see that you can't really shoot it, the other four needs to come across and down here. You're going across the goalie, so if he does shoot it, you can get a rebound. And then, uh, if he doesn't shoot it, you're just going to go behind her so you can start, start the cycle. Okay. And, yeah, it looks like you kind of were doing that. I'm not sure if you could make it down here, but... Uh, the key for Jason is delay, 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 okay? You see that the four needs time to get to the board, and then just hold on to the puck and delay. And that is Paul, in fact. I think they call offside. Okay, next one. Yeah, nice move, Jason. Nice uh, pass. And you actually notice that uh, I'll go over this too. The passing position. Try to go. Try to set your body up between this the skate and the stick because that's one of the best places to pass. As a passer, sometimes I don't know where you are, but that's where I'm going to pass because that's the only way to get it through. So as the person receiving, try to line your body up with where that hole is. In this case, yeah, you're trailing a little bit behind, so it's going to be tough to do that. Uh, but. And but as things goes here, so we turn to the left. You want to turn the other way. Um, it's Jason, right yeah. You want to turn the other way first to either help him or to to just go back back there to, to the cycle. Uh, and she did pass it there. Uh, nice pick off there. Huh? Um, okay, so here, same deal. Nice pick. Uh, if you have no pass across, um, so blur. Uh, or anybody in front of the net, instead of wrestling with a guy in front of the net, wasting your time, just go back here. Drop back here. All this crap is repetitive, I get it, but, you know, a lot of that, a lot of basics is, that's just it, it's just repetition, you know, over and over. So instead of wrestling with a guy here, just go back down here, again, you're going to pass, and you're going to cut in. Okay, and when, again, when you receive it, make sure you're still skating up the board and not being flat-footed. Uh, Alright, so here, 
Well, same deal. So you need front side support and back side support. You have a front side and somebody on the back side. Okay. It's front side and back side support doesn't only apply to cycling. It applies to any passing, really. You always want to have someone have a front side back side support. So, um, you know, also if you cough it up, the guy behind can just pick it up. Okay, good. Hold on. See if you need some here, though. Need some here. Okay, good. Um, someone should have got that. Okay. All right. Before I move on, uh, I should have brought this up at the beginning, but um. In general, you want to cycle, uh, let's see, you want to cycle so um, the direction is going uh, towards the net when you cut in. So, it should look like this. And it should look like that. And, and on the other side, it's actually going to be like this. And like this. Okay, you don't have to do it that way. Um, well, it, it's it's a lot easier though. Okay, so if someone's standing, you know, someone you see the puck right here and you're skating up, it's easier to hit that pass. And the guy has like a one-time shot. Um, people always ask me, well, can can you do it the other way? Uh, yeah, you can. You can do it the other way. It's just ah crap. Uh, it's just a lot harder too. Um, you know what? I'm going to go on the other side. Uh. So can you do it this way? Uh, you can, and there's nothing that's you know there's times there's times for it. It's just again it's a lot harder to because you're gonna be skating backwards while trying to shoot it into it into the net. Um, so in general, yeah, you don't want to start the cycle by skating. You know, a lot of times you'll skate in deep into the zone like you're up here, you skate up deep, and you'll want to back pass it this way. Um, yeah, that can work, but instead, I would try to, uh, I, what I would try to do instead, oops. so what I would try to do instead is, come on, I'm not going to go back, alright, whatever, I'm going to so, sorry, so what I would try to do instead is, if you're back here, and, you know, you have to skate in deep, and then uh, your instincts to pass it back this way. Uh, instead, try to try to just stop up and try to skate just a little bit, and then bank it down this way. That way, you start the you know rotation like that. Okay. So you'll see this next one. I mean, uh, that's kind of what Sue does. It's the puck. Okay. Now you just turn his body. Very simple. So, so uh, uh, I like that pass, except Tony, you probably want to be on the back door, or you're, you're kind of useless there. Um, if you're going to stand there, you might as well just go behind and give him a cycle option. Oh, he gave it a chance. Okay, okay nice pass. Okay, so same deal, tie up one on one, second guy just right in. Get right in. Good, roll. Tony, you get it good. Um, hmm. Okay, that wasn't too bad. By the way, I realize these clips are going to be abruptly uh, changing. Uh, sorry about that again. The, I would add those title clips, but it keeps screwing up. And yeah, I keep pausing it. Uh, I want to pause the video and see what's going on first. Alright, so here, alright, uh, good job. Uh, so John, uh, you want to anticipate that, um, I mean, it's a good job you got to the puck, but, uh, whoever's over here, it's okay that they're not on the board, but you have to anticipate the puck going there. Alright, so Jay, as soon as he gets it, you should be cutting in. Um, you don't want to stand still, okay? Right when you pass it in, you're cutting in. Um, of course, the dangers of that is, aren't you, you know, can somebody... Come back here and start cherry picking. Yeah, well, yeah, he can, but uh, the guy who's supposed to cover you is gonna be this guy here. Okay, so his move. So as you cut in, he's moving back. He's moving back towards our own zone anyway. Okay, so if he coughs up a pass to you somehow, he should be able to get his ass back here. Okay, 
So yeah, defense. I mean, you want to cut him. You want you don't, most of the case, most cases, especially if it's me down here. You guys know I'm gonna cover you, and you know I'm gonna catch a lot of these slow ass guys. So go ahead and feel free to just come in. Um, if I don't again, if I don't pass to you up the middle, then keep going behind the net, and I'm gonna cycle back to you. Okay? Don't don't just stand still here in the middle once I don't pass to you. So again, you see it's a 50-50, somebody else has to just walk in and get it. Um, ideally, I would say maybe it's Jay, but uh, so you got to make sure you cover this guy, but I'm sure you know that. And so, Tony, give him backside support right here. You're kind of in a no-man's line. Yeah. Nice try, nice shot. So that's a good play here. Pass to Sue, and you're waiting for the cycle option, which is perfect. Um, what's even better is, so you don't, again, you guys don't have to cycle, okay? It's just an option. Um, I actually like this play, too, because you cut in, because this, this guy playing D here isn't really watching you, and so Sue just has to get it on your tape. So I actually like that play. Yeah. And it gets picked in. And next one. Alright, uh, so face off goes in the corner. Uh, second guy, jump right in. Don't wait. Just jump right in. Don't wait for him to dig it out. I think he did dig it out, fortunately. And, uh, let's see. Okay, you're in an okay spot. He might shoot it, but just anticipate a pass behind the board. Alright, so he's got no help. He's got no help. You gotta go behind the board and call for that side corner. And. Fortunately, Jason is quick enough to get it. Uh, I'm going to fly this down the helicopter. Okay, sorry about that. Play on. With Scott. So, Scott, you don't have to force the shot. Um, I mean, again, if you can get it through, that's fine. Especially with the screen there, not bad. But you always have this option to Jason. Pass to Jason and cut in. Okay. And it's last one here. Let's try. Try to bake it off him. So, as soon as he gets it, so stop up, stop up. Uh, Jason, that is. So, you get it, and uh, you want to stop up and uh, get that pass behind. He's going to need help, and you know a guy's right on his ass. Okay, so same deal. Scott, right when you get it, you should be able to throw it down low. Someone's got to be there for him. And that's all for cycling. The next one will be passing and miscellaneous. Okay, here I'm going to go over some basic guidelines about passing, or more like I should say receiving. And the miscellaneous is just going to be kind of a lot of plays in which uh, I, it doesn't fit in other three categories. So let's go and start with the first one. Okay, so pass to John, and he misses. Alright. These are... These are just very subtle things in which... You know, for those of you who've been playing hockey for a while, you probably already know this. But, from here, you, you can't turn your head... Okay, so this is John. You can't turn your head and receive it for him. If you do that, this guy's kind of stick is going to be in your way. The pass is going to have to go on the backhand side, so you have to expect it that way. Um, the other thing, too, is you want to skate in a way, so, uh, it's hard to explain, I guess I'd have to actually show you on my eyes, but you, you don't want to skate in a way in which you can get a level two on the other side, like, right when you receive it, you know, you're setting yourself up for a blind hit, you know it's not going to hit you, but, in general, it's a bad habit. You want to skate in a way, so, um, for example, here, I guess it, I guess when you, uh, I'm not sure exactly where you started, but you know, if you just curl up this way, yeah, you're gonna put yourself in a bad position versus if you kind of just skate outwards and then in, you can receive it on the forehand easy. Okay. But here, uh, since you're already skating this pattern, you gotta receive it back in. And so you turn your head this way, but no, it's gotta go back in. Um, another thing, too, I tell a lot of players is you wanna keep your eye on the puck the whole time. Um, you don't necessarily have to do that, but you have to know where the puck is. Uh, the worst part is when they pass it, 
as soon as you turn your head. And this is kind of the perfect example of that. So, it's similar for when we're breaking out. There's a lot of times where people just skate up the ice and then they have their head turned. And right when I pass them, that's when they're not looking. Because you, you don't want to do that. If you've ever turned your head, you want to make sure you look back right away. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. Now right here, Jay has the puck. And what happens here is, right there, you're kind of looking to pass to John, but you're a little bit late, okay? So, for one, you can't make that diagonal pass. That, that blade's in the way, unless unless you specifically target right there, okay? And if you're going to pass it through there, it's fine. you got to pass it soft. Um, but, John, you can't receive it anymore. That that lane is going to be blocked, unless he does it, like, or, like zips it really hard, okay? So, you should scan away in which you can just easily bake it off. Now, by then, you're a little too late, okay? So, you, yeah, you get out of his feet. Um, you get it back, and then uh, I, just, I think you pass it to Tony right now. You gotta skate it in now, because uh, Tony's not going fast enough, okay? Um, that's not his fault. He has to slow down based on what happened on the flight. So, my deal is um, at the blue line, you don't pass to somebody who's just stationary, okay? If they're stationary, then they can't do anything anymore. You have to hit them before they stop. If you don't headman the puck to them before they stop at the blue line, you have to carry it in, okay? Um, one exception is, if someone's stationary at the blue line, you can have your stick across the blue line, and when you receive a pass, it should pretty much automatically be a given go, okay? So to explain that, if you're stationary at the blue line, maybe your stick is across the blue line, so when you receive that pass, uh, you're not going to be the guy to skate in. You're going to get it, give and go to whoever passed it to you, and hopefully he's coming in with speed so you can get it back in. Okay? Or throw it along the board and make him chase it. Okay, hopefully, hopefully that was clear. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, and John, I hate to burn you again, but uh, I think you can uh, use this up the most. Um, okay, so this is a spot where when we break out, it's. Um, we're kind of out of flow here, so you go in here, and so for, again, you have your head turned right there. Okay, yeah. you should already expect a pass on the board, and that would that would be kind of a tough play to make. I, I would have rather have Paul not even pass to you, but if if you're gonna receive the pass, John, you want to just automatically expect it on the board. Um, so your head is turned, so now, like, if you were to pass you right now, you'd kind of be lost. Um, uh, as a defensive, that's why um, if your team if you guys don't break out well, I would just go back behind the net and just wait till everyone comes back and regroups again. But, you know, we don't have to do that. It takes a little bit of practice on knowing how to break out as well. Okay, so you're kind of like, okay, where do I go? Where do I go? So, um, maybe I have an open spot right there. It's hard to tell on this angle. But once you get there, yeah, you can't receive anymore. It's too late. It's too late, so, um, Kind of hard to tell what you should do. Uh, maybe I would skate it. But you're, well, you're skating kind of across. Uh, I would have maybe turned this way or something. So he has a pass turn. I, I don't know. So that, that's why it's important to just watch him the whole time. Okay. And Paul kind of changed it up. Um, yeah, and he can pass this. He pass, that's the only spot he can't pass it. He can't pass their opponent anymore because it will get picked off by 19. Um, could Paul pass the other guys? Probably. Um, I feel like, I guess Jason's kind of presenting a target here. Ah, uh, yeah, that's kind of tough, too. I uh, like right there, I guess. Um, so this is where, yeah, if you don't break out wall, you can just throw it back. Just throw it back, you know, Sue will take care of it, okay? Guys like Sue and Jason, they're pretty responsible, so. Yeah, you can just step in. Next one. Okay, so I keep pausing, so that's why it might come kind of function when you guys see it, but too bad. Okay, so we're going to face off the Sug Sug. I'm not sure why you're going to just pass it out to um, this way. I think you did the right thing going that way. But right when you pass the cross, um, you guys got to follow the flow and cut right back. Again, it's important to always watch what he's doing. So right when you pass the cross, uh, yeah, you guys should cut back the other way. Um, okay, Tony kind of did. That's good. 
and Jay's gonna blob it here, but of course it's a little too late. Uh, I'm still, I wouldn't have made that original pass, I would just pass it on right away, but, oh well. Okay, let's go to the next one. My first sug, I would just, I would just throw the puck softly down the ice that right here. If you baby it, I think you know this, though. you baby it a little too much, so it gets picked off. Yeah. Get it back. Here's where the main thing I want to talk about. Alright, so, sorry, John, this is not a video against you, but, um, but here, uh, so you guys want to paste it. Part of what uh, we've seen the puck too is the uh, timing, okay? Timing and spacing. So, um, as you're skating across, you, you, you're probably going too fast because this guy's going to pick it off right there. Okay? So, it might have been better if you slow down, you went a little bit slower so you end up, you know, in, in the lane. So, as you see here, um, so yeah, if you can't receive it, you can't receive it there because 49 is going to pick it off or it's going to be too close. So, the only that's left open is right here. Okay, so one you should either just turn real fast or you should slow down to begin with. All right, so let's see what happened. Okay, so so you turn back the other way. So again, it's important to always be watching the puck. Um, uh, I, you can skate backwards as you're going towards the other net. I don't usually advocate that because you want to get speed, but if you have to, you can do it. Um, to watch the puck. So your head turned that way, and then it. So it's like kind of like, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? Like, know where the puck is. Know where the puck is. And then I think Jay tries to pass to you, so. But. Yeah, you're not looking. <laughs> yeah, next one. Okay, here. Jay gets it. Alright, so this is a pretty good one. You're in a good spot this time. Um, I think it just. Get your stick up. So that's a soft hand. So that was a good position action. Um, again, uh, Jay, what you can also do is, because you kind of bulleted this pass, so you can also softly bank on the board. But yeah, this is actually even better. If he, as soon as you hit him on the tape, I think it's even better. Um, once you lose the opportunity, I bank it off the board. Yeah, this is a good pass. Just need the hands. Right, I think that wraps up the passing part. Oh, there's one more. Okay, uh, sorry. Okay, sorry, I take that back. It's not a, um, this isn't a passing. This is actually a uh, miscellaneous stuff. So. Right, so, so you kind of being a lazy ass here. You got to go and get the puck and make sure he freezes it. At least keep playing, because obviously he plays it, and then the play keeps going. Um, yeah, so skate down and stop up. Don't be lazy. So, like, he gets it, and you just peel out. What are you doing? What are you doing? Come on, man. Make him freeze at least. Alright, this one's very subtle. Uh, I'll talk more about this in the future about uh, offensive zone attack. But um, here you have kind of a two on one wall blur. This is blur right here. Um, so you get the puck. You have kind of, well, it's kind of a two on two time, kind of a two on one. Uh, it depends if Jason can beat this guy, but um, instead of cutting to the middle, because uh, this guy's going to, I don't know, it's hard to tell. This guy's going to help out. So when you cut to the middle, it's going to make it a little bit harder. But um, one thing I tell my roller team is, uh, first guy in, go wide. So first man wide, first man wide. So I would just try to take it wide, unless, you know, you, unless you think you can beat him. You cut to the middle, and unfortunately he gets you. But, in general, if you don't know what to do with the puck when you first get into the zone, try to take it wide. I would say first man wide, yeah. Alright, so I actually did some of my other videos, or video, I should say. Uh, Probably know when you watched it, but um, so I'm gonna repeat it again. But I might as well use this time to talk about uh, defensive zone assignments. Uh, so here, this is the defensive zone. Okay, this is our goalie. Um, so we have forward here, forward here. Right, so we need to talk about what we do if we win and lose. All right. So if we lose the faceoff draw, so the puck goes back there somewhere. Um. The forward should get out and cover this man right away. The defenseman should cover this guy who took the face off. Uh, this forward should go to this point man here. And this defenseman should cover him. Okay, if we lose the face off. 
Right. Uh, simple enough. Now, what happens a lot of times if these two guys get tied up in their wrestling, this guy should just walk right in and take it out. Right. I hate seeing a face off in which you know two guys are tied up and everyone just sits their ass there. Uh, face offs are you, you win face offs as a team sometimes. Okay. You just walk in and take it. Okay. Uh, same with um, this forward here. You can walk in and just take it right away. Right. As soon as you see a split second where it's not worn cleanly, you just get right in there. It, sorry, it's defensive. I don't know if I said forward. All right, so uh, if we lose, the, I mean, if we win the face off, sorry about that. If we win the face off, my general plan is to so the puck goes back here somewhere. Okay. So one thing I like as defensive is I just get the puck and I like to just automatically rip it around this way. Okay. Especially uh, against a good team. Well, these teams aren't putting too much pressure, but in general, a good team would just come right in and pressure you. So I want this forward to, um, once we win it, that's, once we win it, I want him to kind of swing this way and get the puck on the boards here and expect it, okay? You don't want to be too high here because you don't want this guy to ever cut, cut you off. Okay, so you want to make sure you're lower. And that goes with any breakout, not just off the face off. Um... Uh, that's why, as a forward, too, I don't want you automatically just skating up. Okay? A lot of times I see the forward do that before he drops it, you skate up. That, that's okay. I see you're cheating. That's fine. But, you know, you see, oh, we won the draw, and then come back. Okay. But I cheat sometimes, too, hoping they give it to him, and I can just pick it from him. Um, but this defense, and usually I want him just kind of staying in front of the net in case we cough it up. And this guy's just going to go off to the side here in case, uh, and defense is, this defense in place too far back, and he's going to forecheck, then you should be wide open. Right? And that's also why I like lining up this way. Um, you don't have to line up this way, of course, but you better have a plan on what to do uh, if you if you line up the other way. So, for example, uh, let me erase this guy. Oops. Okay. Um, I'm just going to mark him in green. I don't feel like changing the color. Okay, if we line up like that, which I don't prefer in the defensive zone, that's fine, but just know who you're getting, okay? So in this particular case, if we lost the face off, um, we lost the face off, I would have this forward go there then, and this forward go there. Okay, this defenseman, sorry, this defenseman here covers this guy, and this defenseman covers this guy. Okay. So, like I said, I think it's easier just to have him line up here than to have this guy lined up here. Alright, so with that, let's go ahead and move on to the rest of the video. Alright, let's see how we execute our just face off. Okay, so they swore one. Alright, so we're at this position. Um, so we, we were lined up this way. If we're going to line up this way, um, this forward should get him. Where you guys hurry up and jump out to him. Scott, you have this guy, and Jay, you have this guy behind him. And yeah, uh, yeah, we're kind of uh, completely unorganized. Okay, puts up a crappy shot, doesn't matter. Let's get the next one. Oh, this is offensive then, okay. I uh, won't go too much in offensive zone in case right now. By the way, Blair's kicking ass on him. Good job, Blair. You know what? I might have put this in the cycle video, so sorry if I did. But uh, generally, I uh, win a face off. I probably should have put in the second video. Uh, win a face off, or you can shoot, or um, you know what? I think I did do this. But like I said, I do these out of order and I uh, do them on different days and stuff. Um, when I win a face off, I like to just go to the side here. Um, I want the other guy going towards the net, so that way I pause the pass or the whoever defense is passing it right there. As play, take two shot, and yeah, so you take two shots. The second time, you definitely should pass it down, and he was ready for it. Okay, again, I apologize. I think this was in the cycle video as well. Um, I'm gonna definitely mention it here. Uh, one particular thing. Okay, right here. Um. So, but you're kind of just saying, so you gotta realize it's a 50-50 puck. You gotta go right, right away to help them. Um, 
what Jason should be doing, I think it's Jason, what he should be doing is time to put it up and expecting you to come by, but obviously if you're not going to come by, it doesn't do any good tying him up. Um, like I said before, don't wait for a teammate to dig it out on these 50-50 pucks. Go right in there, out number two to one, and just take the puck. It's one of the easiest things to do. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it was a cycle video, so a little short thing. Um, so defensemen, one of your goals is to headman the puck. Headman the puck right away. Um, if you don't headman the puck, you slow the forward zone at the blue line. Alright, even if that's like a two foot pass. Now in this case it's not. I think we have one of those later. So here, yeah, his preventing target, uh, you gotta hit him. He's wide open, he has space, you have to hit him. Otherwise, he's just gonna stop at the blue line and can't do anything with it. Alright, so you pass it back, and yeah. It, uh, you want to hit man the puck when you can, especially if you have space. If um, a player is right on him, yeah, you don't have to. But defense as a general, yeah, it doesn't have to be a D-man. If you're a forward, if you happen to be back to your same deal, hit man, hit man the puck up. But I'm actually glad I included this one. Uh, so I forgot to mention, when you win a face-off, I highly suggest winning face-offs towards the board. And okay, not to the middle. If you win it to the middle, um, you get some problems there. It's going towards the goalie. Okay, get away from the goalie. And uh, I don't know if you miss hit this or like, you meant to try to hit it back that way. If you're going to use your forehand as a right eater, you got to make sure it goes way back there. Um, so as you can see here, so it's just kind of a tie up and you kind of just hit it. So, so don't panic hit, okay? It's, it's got to be hit down here or you just hold it there and let you come and take it. Um, that could be bad. And there's one more thing I wanted to bring up here. So there's a loop, there's a slip up. You poke it. Right, so we have kind of these broken plays. Um, I would just get this out of the blue line uh, at this point. I mean, it's got a little bit dangerous there. I would just get that crap out of the blue line. Let's see me a lot of times in general. You know, all I do is to take it back to uh, the net, uh, the quiet zone. Okay. Um, but in this case, because the little added pressure and little mishandles and stuff, I would just get it out. Yeah. You know, no real bad result of this. Yeah, I guess that wraps it up for the miscellaneous part. It should be the end of the video. I don't think I'm... Yeah, I should be the end. As I said last time, uh, give me comments. Go ahead and post comments on YouTube if you want. Give me a little feedback. As I said at the very beginning, I don't know everything. If I everything I said was technically correct, that's just kind of my thinking. Um, if you think I'm wrong, then just tell me what you would do differently. Or, um, you know, I I didn't play tournament level hockey, so it's not like I know all there is at all. I, this is just kind of what I've learned throughout my playing experience. Right? Give me feedback, and hopefully, you get another video. Hopefully, it improves your play. If you guys don't give a shit about this, or no, watch it, man. I'm gonna stop doing it because it is uh, it is time consuming. I do like doing it, but it's much nicer if people actually learn from it. All right, later, guys.